Hi everyone, this is Miss Tom with another Math Minute. We left off on Math Minute number 82, so that's where we're going to start. Remember, make sure you pause the video while you're doing the questions, and then when you're ready, come back, unpause, and let's see how you did. All right, here we go. Let's go over number one. It says a positive number and a negative number is always positive. And when you see the word sum, think of a plus sign, sum of a positive number. Let's go ahead and write one. Whenever I choose a number, I, use, I usually like to use numbers like 10 because it's easy to work with. And then this is a negative number, so we're going to add, let's go with negative 5. All right, so 10 plus negative 5, 10 means you go forward 10, negative 5 means you go backwards 5. So we actually do end up with a positive 5. Now the question is saying, is it always positive? Is this true? Well, let's go ahead and use 10 again. But instead of adding negative 5, let's go ahead and add negative 15. Is this going to result in a positive answer? Actually, no, it's going to result in a negative answer. Therefore, we know this is false. This statement is only sometimes true, not always true. All right, now let's go over number two. Make sure to give yourself a star if you got question number one right. And let's go ahead and talk about number two. This one requires the distributive property, so make sure you distribute five times y, that's gonna be five y, plus five times b, that's gonna go five b. Can we combine these terms? No, because they are unlike. So I'm just going to write down which one that matches with, and that matches with B. So our answer is B. Next, let's go over number three. Number three, it has 4Y times 5Y. A common misanswer is to write 4 times 5, that's 20, and Y times Y, that is Y. However, we know Y times Y is actually going to be Y squared. And which one is y squared with a 20 as the coefficient? That is e. All right. So we've got b and e. Star those if you got them right. Now let's continue. We've got number 4. Number 4 says 10 times 5y minus 20y. 10 times 5y, that's going to be 50y minus 20y. You'll notice that 50y and 20y are both the same term value. They both have a y in it, so we can combine them. So 50y minus 20y will equal to 30y. And which one is equal to 30y? Y, that is d. All right, let's continue. Number five. Number five is talking about 3y times 2y times another 3y. We're going to look at the coefficients, coefficients meaning the number in front of the, des the variable. So we go 3 times 2, that's going to be 6. y times y is going to be y squared times another. 3y is equal to 3 times 6 is going to be 18. And y squared times y, that's going to be y to the third. All right, which one does that match? That matches C. All right, let's go over number six now. Oh, another distributive property question. So we're going to go four times y, that is 4y, plus four times five, that's 20. And which one does that match? That matches A. All right, how'd you guys do? Hopefully pretty well. Let's keep going. You guys can do this. Now let's go over number seven now. We've got negative five and zero is that considered on the line so we know negative five is x and zero is y is that point on the line so let's see here remember x means you're talking about this axis we want to go here first then y means this axis here okay and what you'll notice is negative 5, 0, where is that located? Negative 5, 0, well, we got to go with x first, okay? And that's here. 0, we don't go up anything, so we're here. Is that on the line? Yes. 
Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the next point. The next point is 0, 2. So we look at 0, 2, and we see that it is, we don't run anything, we don't go up anything, run, o run over anything, but we do go up 2, and that is here. Notice this point that I put here. Is that on the line? No, it's not. So we go false or no. And then finally, we've got what's the slope of the line or the rise over run? What's the rise over run? Well, you just need to figure out what is the lattice points. And lattice points means what are the points in the corners? So here's one point in the corner. I'm going to go right here. You don't want to choose points that are not in the corner because you can't easily identify what they are. So here's another point that's also in a corner pocket. So let's go ahead and talk about how much did we rise. We rose one, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually no. We just rose one, two, three, four. Okay. And remember, mistakes are expected. When you make a mistake, it's okay. Just erase. Go back again. Math is actually a lot about mistakes. You learn more from making mistakes than getting correct answers. So anytime you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just keep going. Then we're going to notice our x-axis. We can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's here. So then we know our slope, or also known as delta y over delta x, is going to be 4 over 5. So our slope is 4 fifths, which is also known as 0 0.8. All right, now, hopefully you got both of those answers. Make sure to box your answers after you got them. And then finally, it says if a line on the graph goes from left to right, the slope of the line is what? Since it's going up and it stays there, it is positive. All right, you guys, have a great day. If you're wondering, my dog was barking in the background, but I think that makes the video just a little bit more interesting. All right, have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.